Welcome back to the Warbird Mistress. Today is the 18th of December, 1941, and this is a walk through the war. Beginning in the zone of the Interior's 1st Air Force, the 97th Observation Squadron, 66th Observation Group, begins operations out of Miami Military Airport, Florida. The 109th Observation Squadron, 67th Observation Group, transfers from Camp Beauregard near Pineville in the upper part of the Louisiana to Savannah Army Air Base, Georgia. Both squadrons fly in search of U-boats using a mix of light observation aircraft made up of Douglas O-38s, North American O-47s, Stinson O-49 Vigilance, later L-1, and Curtis O-52 Owls. Turning to the Central Pacific Theater of Operations in the Hawaiian Air Force, the air echelon of the 22nd Bombardment Squadron Heavy, 7th Bombardment Group Heavy, arrives at Hickam Field, Oahu, Territory of Hawaii, from the United States with B-17s. At the top, there's a bit of a shake-up in the brass, as Hawaii Army District Commander Lieutenant General Walter Short, Commander-in-Chief U.S. Pacific Fleet Admiral Husband Kimmel, and Commanding General of the Hawaiian Air Force General Frederick L. Martin are all relieved of their commands. While Admiral Kimmel and Lieutenant General Short will soon be retired from service, Major General Martin, who, unlike the others, was shown to have done his best to guard against air attack, goes on to command the 2nd Air Force, the numbered air force responsible for the operational training of pilots and flight crews, as we'll see next month. Martin is replaced as commanding general of the Hawaiian Air Force by Brigadier General Clarence L. Tinker. Tinker, an Army aviator since 1919, is given his second general's star and becomes the highest-ranking Native American officer in the history of the United States Army. He is a native Osage Indian, fluent in the language and active in the Osage community and press, learned English in school as a child, and spent his whole adult life in the Army. He is well experienced in the Pacific as he was first commissioned as a third lieutenant in the Philippine Constabulary and later served in California and the Southwest, where he became a major proponent of air power in general and in the Pacific War he saw on the horizon specifically. Foreseeing a three-dimensional conflict where air would be the deciding factor, he wrote on many occasions that Japan would be defeated one day by strategic bombing, a sentiment shared rarely even by those in the aviation community at the time. And that was Thursday, the 18th of December, 1941. This has been a walk through the war. Be sure to subscribe to the playlist for a new video every day as we follow the United States Army Air Forces through the entirety of the war. In the meantime, this is Claire, and I am the Warbird Mistress. Take care.